In this video, we're going to talk about structs, which are C's way of being able to create custom data types beyond the primitive data types like integers, floats, and characters. Generally, you can look at structs kind of like C's idea of objects. There's a lot more limitations compared to a traditional object. You really only have the ability to associate properties with a struct. But generally, we're going to use these structs for any sort of data structures that we're creating in the C programming language. So before we discuss the idea of stacks, queues, linked lists, trees, these types of things, we need to understand the idea of a struct. And the concept of a struct will be fairly straightforward. So suppose that we wanted to create a data type that could represent a student. A student maybe has a name, an age, we'll just keep it at those two for now. What you would do is you would say struct as your main keyword, and then you would give the struct some sort of name. So for instance, this is representing a student, so we'll call it student. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna put in each of the properties, giving the actual data type as well as the property. So for example, if I wanna give a name, I would have that as a care star since it's a string, right? And then we would have maybe age, which could be an integer. And then if I want to declare an instance of this struct, what I do is I type in struct student, and then I give it some sort of name, like a variable name. So I could say struct student s, for instance. And then I can access all the different properties just by using the dot operations that you would typically see in any other programming language, right? So if I want to change the name, I could do s.name. So I could say s.name equals, and I could just put in a name like Scott, for instance. If I want to set the age, I could put s.age. You know, I could set an age inside of here as well. Then if I want to access the properties, I do it in the same way. So suppose I want to print out the name and age of my student. Then I could do s.name, s.age, right? So this will take each of those property values and it will place them inside of this print. So it's going to say name, it's going to go into s, so it's going to print out the name. And then age goes into the percent %d, which will print out the age. So with that, let's just go ahead and save this and see how that runs. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this, and then we'll run it. And as you can see, it prints out both the name and the age. So it does look like that works successfully, right? Now, another thing that we can do that's useful here is we can actually initialize the values when we declare the struct. So I could say struct student, uh, we could say s2 equals, and then I put in parentheses each of the values that I want to associate with each of the different parameters of my struct. I do these one to one. So the first one matches up to name, the second one matches up to age. So if I want to put in a name like uh, Jane and an age, say like 20, that would be the way that I would do that. So you say I have name and age. And of course we want to make sure to put in a semicolon at the end of that, otherwise it won't work. And that would give us our student S2. So that initializes their name and age. So now if I were to print out uh, both of those different properties, right, percent %s, percent %d, uh, s2.name, s2.age, we would get that exact result, Jane and 20. So let's go ahead and try that. And as you can see, we do get that exact expected result. Now, even if you do initialize these values, you can still change them course. So I could do s2.name equals and change that, or I could change the age, you know, I can change these different values if I want to do that. So like, for example, if I wanted to then change the name, I could do s2.name equals Joe or something like that. And when I print this, you'll see that the name will have changed as well. So you see that that does generally work. So these different little properties here of the structs can be used as variables, right? You can use them basically the same way that you would any other variable. You can set their values. You can do things like adding and subtracting and all the other operations that you could typically do with variables since they just have the same operations available for them as their data types. So that gives you a good overview of structs. We're going to be using these in later videos to discuss different data structures like stacks, queues, linked lists, this type of idea. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.